Israeli armed forces storm a Turkish ship on its way to Gaza. Many of the passengers are killed or injured. There's worldwide condemnation of the Israeli action. What will be the ramifications? They'd hoped to deliver aid and draw attention to Israel's three-year blockade of Gaza, but the attempt ended in tragedy. In the early hours of morning, Israeli armed forces stormed the lead ship in the flotilla that was Gaza-bound. At least 19 people were killed. The vessel was still in international waters, approximately 70 kilometers off the Gaza coast, well away from Israel's zone of maritime control. The military action has left Israel at the forefront of a diplomatic crisis, but the Israeli government remains defiant. Turkey, which in the past has been a strong ally of Israel, is furious. The chairman of Turkish Foreign Relations Committee, Mirat Merkan, has lashed out at Israel's claims. Mr. Ayalon is telling a lie. He is not telling the truth. Because all these ships, before they, they start their journey, have been investigated by the Turkish authorities. There is no weapon whatsoever. There was no weapon whatsoever on board. And there was not even a single uh, thing that could be used against the authorities. Let's, let's go to Phil Reese in London. Regardless of the actual circumstances of this, the bottom line perhaps is that the attack took place in international waters against a vessel of a sovereign nation. Is this something that focus should be brought to? Well, you can imagine, Mike, if, uh, for example, the Iranian authorities um, went to international waters and um, started um, killing people aboard a ship. Um, I mean, there would be um, much more outrage than you've got now. Um, and I think this does pose questions about the future. Um, for example, um, what if next time Turkey were to send a military escort, which it's fully entitled to, uh, while the convoy sails in international waters? What would happen then? So, I mean, I think that the world should concentrate um, well, on that, plus the excessive use of force. Um, but sadly, I don't think it will in the coming days. I think that there'll be a lot of talk, but very little action. Well, Mr. Faakyol, in Istanbul, um, a Turkish ship involved in this uh, tragedy. Is there a sense, perhaps, that Turkish sovereignty has been abrogated in this attack? Well, there, there is a... Uh, strong condemnation of Israel in Turkey. The society is infuriated, the government is infuriated, uh, and everybody considers this as an unacceptable attack uh, on a civilian ship in international waters. And Israel was already very much criticized for what it has been doing in Gaza, and this effort was a trial to, put, uh, to bring some humanitarian aid into Gaza. Uh, the Turkish uh, authorities and, uh, have repeatedly said that the ships were cleared and there were no weapons on the ships. And you can see in the footage the only weapons, uh, so-called, those people had was just a few sticks. And they saw Israeli commandos attacking their ship with guns and they used the sticks to fight the Israeli commandos for a few moments and then they were shot and they were killed and massacred. And for the Tur from a Turkish perspective, this is totally unacceptable. This is a barbaric act. Uh, and, and Turks will never forget this. Uh, there was already a strong condemnation of Israel for that it has been committing crimes against the Palestinian people, war crimes according to UN reports, and now Israel has committed another act, a similar act, against uh, peaceful activists from Turkey and from other, uh, other nations uh, all across the world. The incident has sparked intense international reaction. United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon said he was shocked. The European Union has demanded a full inquiry. The Arab League strongly condemned what it called a terrorist act. And France said nothing can justify such violence. Spain, Sweden, Denmark and Greece have formally called in Israeli ambassadors to say the raid was unacceptable. And Russia has called it a crude violation of international law. As we mentioned before, Turkey has long been an ally of Israel, but relations between the two turned sour after the Israeli offensive on Gaza in December 2008. Turkey immediately stopped moderating indirect peace talks between Israel and Syria. 
Then at the 2009 World Economic Forum in Davos, Turkish Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan walked out of a discussion concerning Israel's conduct in Gaza. Turkey also excluded Israel at the last minute from a joint military exercise in October last year. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu denounced the move and said it called into question whether Turkey could be an honest broker in any peace talks. Earlier this year, Israel publicly humiliated Ankara's ambassador over a Turkish television drama that it claimed portrayed Israelis in a bad light. Israel then formally apologized after Turkey threatened to recall its ambassador from Tel Aviv. Let's go to Mustafa Akyol in Istanbul. This, a massive dent in Israeli-Turkish relations. How great is it? It is huge. First of all, I would like to say a few things. The people on the ship, they had no weapons, as you can see on the footage. They had no firearms. They had just a few sticks to probably protect them. And yes, they were probably expecting an attack from the Israeli army, and that attack came. And when you see commandos landing on your ship with rifles, you perceive it as an attack. And they, as civilians who just had sticks in their arms, in their hands, tried to protect themselves, but they were in return massacred by Israeli, uh, Israeli commandos. So that's what, you, what happened, and I condemn this, and I think my nation condemns this. You can see this right, right now outside of the streets. Turkey is infuriated, and uh, first of all, the people on the ship did not recognize the legitimacy of Israeli blockade on Gaza. Israel says it is allowing enough food and humanitarian uh, stuff into Gaza, but the UN denies that, and the people on the ship did not trust Israel. They did not trust that if they gave the humanitarian uh, uh, material, is, they did not trust that it would go in there. So they wanted to bring it themselves. They did not accept Israeli claims to have a right to, bl to put blockade on Gaza. They were idealists. They tried to uh, break this. They paid this with their lives. The Turkish nation will always remember them as honorable people who believed in justice. And right now, Turkey is really infuriated, and we are not really buying into this Israeli line that Israel did all its best. It was, it was not just a search, it was a clear attack, commandos landing down from a helicopter on a ship. And the people on the ship considered this as an attack, they tried to defend themselves, and they died. And Turkey will never forget this, and the dent in Turkish-Israeli relationship will unfortunately get deeper and deeper. I believe that Turkish and Israeli relations is important, that Turkey can be a mediator in the Middle East, but Israel is just uh, not allowing Turkey to have that edge with all its defiant uh, position, which doesn't recognize anything about international law, which never finds a fault in, its, in Israel. I mean, I have never seen any Israeli spokesman saying, oh yes, we made a mistake. In any of this, either in Gaza, the whole world is reacting, but Israel always thinks it is doing all the right things. Children are, di children are dying in Gaza. Hundreds of children died with Israeli bombs. They burned to death with Israeli bombs. And Israel thinks everything it did was perfectly wonderful. And we Turks at least are not buying that propaganda. Well, let's we, go to Phil Reese right, and uh, right. pick up a point here. Um, Phil Reese, uh, we've got, for example, a, a UN Security Council meeting being called on an emergency basis. There has been an international reaction that has been seldom seen uh, with regard to actions by Israel. Do you think that this mass international reaction and the intensity of it signals that on this occasion the world generally considers Israel to have overstepped the mark? Well, the world has considered that before on many occasions, um, but nothing tangible has happened. Um, it's been mere rhetoric. Um, I think what Turkey does um, will be very important now. Turkey, led by an Islamist party, the AKP, um, is actually slowly inching itself into a position of influence and power in the Middle East and possibly becoming the leading player, and it could do this, in the whole Israeli-Palestinian dispute. Now, remember, too, that Turkey is a very close ally of the United States. So I suspect that, you know, Obama woke up this morning um, on Memorial Day in the United States, saw this news and, and thought, you know, what, what am I to do about this? Because, um, you know, which side is he going to be on? Um, so I think that, you know, clearly there will be a lot of noise. But look, 1982, Israeli invasion of Lebanon, 2006, attack on Lebanon. Throughout this time, there's been a crescendo um, of 
um, condemnation, but it's in a way that doesn't actually harm Israel's interests. And of course, the one country that could harm those interests are the United States. Um, but in the end, despite words, it does nothing to do so.